Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another video. So the signature series of this channel is the High Integrity Mods, which got its name from a sticker on a pink $30 strap from China with beautifully broken English. I've done a couple of mod projects now, taking cheap pink guitars and throwing stupidly premium parts into them, and they did really well in terms of views, but I don't want things to get too samey. So I started thinking, what's one of the worst guitars that I've ever had on the channel? Like one that absolutely sucked. Yeah. If you've been around for a while, you know which one I'm talking about. We're gonna mod a Firebird Zero. By the way, we will be giving away the finished project, so stay tuned until the end of the video to find out how you can win. For those of you who were spared the charm of the Firebird Zero, here's a quick little recap. They were part of Gibson's Experimental 2017 S series, basically super low cost guitars with low quality import parts, but assembled in the USA. So the idea behind them was you could have a Gibson USA guitar for less than 500 bucks. The problem was, they were bad. Those who bought them will tell you to the day they die that they were amazing for the money, but I wholly disagree. Didn't sound good, it was hard to keep in tune, it really wasn't fun to play. Anyways, they didn't get great reviews, they were discontinued, dropped for the 2018 lineup, which means that you can't buy them new anymore. So I reached out to my friends at Reverb and they've given me some reverb bucks to browse the marketplace and make the guitar the Firebird Zero could have been. So let's do some shopping. Obviously we need a Firebird Zero, and I'm looking for the disgustingly glorious or gloriously disgusting, whichever way you want to look at it, gold mist finish. Amazing. This has actually gone up in value to 550 from the 499 that it originally went for. That is the power of the Gibson name. We're gonna add that to cart. Boom. Now time to choose some pickups. I was totally not a fan of the stock. I forgot what they were called, whatever pickups. They sounded exactly how you'd expect cheap ceramic humbuckers to sound like. If I recall, it was pretty much just entirely high end. Like if you're not a fan of bass, mids, clarity, or warmth, those are the pickups for you. Some of my favorite Gibson pickups though was from that year's Firebird Studio. So they're not that common, but I'm gonna see if I can find a pair of 496 and 490R humbuckers. I think in the case of the Firebird Zero, because everything else doesn't look that high end, I want them with chrome covers if possible. I think even something small like that would go a long way with this guitar in terms of aesthetics. Okay, so this looks like it was ripped right out of a Firebird studio. We've got everything I need here, pickups, knobs, wiring, pickup selector. It's a little pricey though. So this one, 80 bucks, just the humbucker. And yeah, from the date, it looks like it's from the 2017 Firebird studio. Okay, is there a matching R though? No. So this one is covered but it's gonna come with a 500T as well. And then the rest of them are uncovered. And for this guitar, I don't wanna have a mismatched covered and uncovered set. Screw it. This comes with the pickups plus everything I need, add to cart. Okay, and the last thing that I'm gonna pick up for right now are some nice upgraded tuners. I don't remember being too impressed with the stock machine heads, but there's nothing a good set of Grover locking tuners couldn't solve. Okay, so, all right, these look perfect. Six in line locking, I'm gonna add that to cart. Boom, view cart. All right, everything's in the cart. Gonna hit that buy button, and now we play the waiting game. See you guys in a few days, or in a couple of seconds because of editing magic. All right, let's see what we have here. Yep, just as I remember it. It's pretty bad. Everything feels just as cheap as it looks. The finish looks and feels like it was applied very quickly. The tuners feel like hot garbage. The bridge is still a major concern. It's really high and pulls forward a lot. It's just a flawed design and needs to go. Now, as bad as the overall concept for this guitar was, there are some pleasant surprises. Firstly, the build quality is actually pretty decent. The neck was one of the only redeeming features on the one that I reviewed, and the one on this one feels just as good as I remember. And then while the fingerboard was kind of up on the edges on the M2 that I tried, which was another guitar in this poorly conceived S series, the one here is actually a pretty nice piece of rosewood. It's just a bit dry. The seller seems to have done a good job on the setup as well. I forgot that it was a Tectoid nut, which is basically just a Graftech Tusk nut with branding exclusive to Gibson. So that isn't gonna need replacing, which is great because I would rather not make and cut a new nut. And then the fretwork is actually pretty decent. They're level, no issues with dead spots. Okay, so I have recorded the sound clips and the before portion of the demo track. And it seems like there might be something wrong with the switch. <laughs> So 
to you. I don't know, we'll figure it out. Now, a bit of a snag here, I wasn't able to get that electronics and plastic set with reverb bucks, so I went ahead and got two covered pickups individually, then we'll look at the rest of the electronics, like the pots, to see if they need replacing, like I suspect that they do. All right, time to get to work. First, obviously, I have to remove the strings. As you can see, I am using a string winder now, so you can all shut the Fuck. I mean, stop suggesting that I get one in the comments. Then the next step was to gut the Firebird of all the electronics and hardware. More good news with the electronic components. I kind of assumed that Gibson had used cheap Chinese mini pots, but the one in the Firebird Zero actually uses the same ones found in newer Epiphones. They're large, high quality Korean potentiometers. It's not at the super premium level, but the Korean ginseng stuff is already pretty good. If it was like the garbage found in the $39 Wish Strat, I would replace it without question. But for this, it's just not necessary. I will still double check all the joints though while I'm replacing the pickups to see if I can fix that weird connection issue. Since this guitar was probably sitting around for a couple of years, the fretboard was super dry, so I'm hydrating it with probably too much Dunlop lemon oil. Now it's time to remove the solidly average tuners and pickups. All right, so we've definitely made progress, but there's still a couple of things that I wanna pick up for this project. I think the orange control knobs are pretty disgusting in general, but they just totally do not work with the rest of this color combination at all. And then I was waiting to get this guitar in to see what kind of bridge we needed for a replacement. Thankfully, it looks like the standard Gibson wraparound post, so we should have plenty of options. Okay, Hunter from the future here. I was totally wrong about that. It was nearly a disaster, but, uh. We'll get to that in a second. Ideally, I'd also want to replace this tacky, cheesy, perloid pickguard. A black one might really complete the look of the guitar. It would be kind of like one of those pastel-colored Telecasters from Fender's Mentera series, but I don't think we'll be able to. This guitar was so unpopular, I doubt anyone is selling custom pickguards for it, which means I'd have to cut one myself and I have neither the skills nor the tools to accomplish that right now. So new control knobs and a new bridge. We've got about 175 reverb bucks remaining. Let's see what we can get with that. We'll start with the easiest first and that would be the control knobs. I'm thinking domes might look kinda cool, but the concept of this project is the guitar that Gibson would have made the Firebird Zero. And domes are more of a Fender thing, not Gibson. Gibson uses speed knobs, or they use reflectors. Between the two, I think the reflectors work better with this project, so let's find some of those. Wow, the power of the Gibson brand. Vintage knobs going for $245 plus $8 shipping. That is nuts. Uh, we don't need official Gibson knobs for this project. They all look and feel basically the same anyways. Let's go with this Hosco brand. We've got the import pots, so we need the metric measurements. Huh, this is how they get you. 369 plus 1264 shipping. That's some sneaky shit, Hosco. And they don't even take reverb bucks. Okay, $12 plus $3 shipping, that's much more reasonable. We don't need all four knobs, but better to have extra than to not. And they take reverb bucks. And then the bridge. Now there are a few different ways we can go with this one since it uses Gibson's regular stud spacing, but I've narrowed it down to three. We can go for an official Gibson bridge. I'm thinking the compensated wraparound that they use for the very popular DC tributes. It's not very exciting, but it's a dependable piece of hardware traditionally found on affordable Gibsons. They do carry the Gibson tax though, so it can get pretty expensive. This one is allegedly a custom shop, vintage original spec, 99 bucks with free shipping. This new one is going for $126 plus $8 shipping. This looks to be the cheapest one. The listing says it might be vintage. They're asking $70 with free shipping. This one they're asking almost hundred bucks with $30 shipping and a screw is missing. Oh, it's coming from France, that's why. Not really sure what's up with this listing. Oh, I get it. It's like sunken pirate treasure. That's real cute. I kinda wanna buy it purely because of the creativity in this listing. So yeah, that's one option. Now here's another idea. Because Gibson didn't include a standard bridge on the Firebird Zero, we can follow in that same vein and go with something a little more out of the ordinary by looking at aftermarket brands. The stock bridge, which although shit, does have individually adjustable saddles. Godot, one of my favorite aftermarket hardware companies, has 
this thing. It looks super high quality, has individually adjustable saddles as well, and at about 50 bucks with free shipping, it's surprisingly affordable. So that's a pretty safe option, it's hard to go wrong with Japanese hardware. And the last one I'm looking at is the Hipshot Baby Grand. Hipshot parts are all made in the US with stainless steel saddles, big fan of their products. Now the Baby Grand is interesting because while it's replacement for a wrap tail, it itself is not actually a wrap tail. It's got an attached angled tailpiece thing, so the bass strings are longer, the treble strings are shorter, and this should provide even tension across all the strings. Something which standard wrap tails cannot. This seems to be the cheapest one, $70 with free shipping. So it's more expensive than the Goto, but still not as expensive as the Gibson. That is some horrible Photoshop work though. You know what? This is the one I think I'm gonna go with. Not because it's realistic, I don't think Gibson would ever use a bridge like this, but maybe they should have. It could have acted as a differentiator, like a unique feature to set the S-Series apart from their other offerings, as opposed to making it just the cheapest Gibson option. Plus, I think it'll look really cool compared to the other two. And if I'm being honest, I'm really curious to try one out and see how well it actually works. As I said, pricing is all over the place, but it looks like we can get it for about 70 bucks with free shipping. So I'm going to go ahead and add that to cart. Proceed to checkout. Going to place this order. Order placed. I'm excited. Alright, so everything's here, and for whatever reason, I always like starting with the tuners. And the first thing I'm noticing is how much more solid the Grovers are than the stock ones. Like, even just in terms of pure mass, look at the difference. Alright, so let's go ahead and get these guys installed. So already, I think this looks much better. Everything from the larger machine heads to the kidney buttons associated with modern Gibsons. It's actually kind of awesome how much of a difference just changing the tuners has made. Now, I haven't screwed them in. Honestly, they feel secure enough already. Plus, it is a Gibson, and since we're giving this away, if I put holes in the headstock, the next owner won't be able to put it back to stock to get the maximum resale value. So I'm gonna leave it as is for now, and if we run into any problems, I'll screw them in later. Moving on to the pickups, I'm actually super excited about these. I loved the sound of this 496 set in the 2017 Firebird Studio. Digging the braided wire, and again, I think they're gonna look really good with the covers compared to the uncovered DSCs. So let's pop the stock ones out of the pickup rings and get the new ones into the guitar. Okay, pickups are in, wiring works, thank god it seems like I learned a thing or two from the first Pink Strat High Integrity project. Now to get these orange top hats off and replace them with reflectors. Alright, so those look really good as well, and the last major component it's time to install this crazy cool Hipshot Baby Grand Bridge. I mean, already it looks and feels really high quality as expected from Hipshot, plus with the design, we should be able to get some good tension across all the strings. Really excited to see how it performs in practice, and once that's on there, we should be good to go.
Okay, so it wouldn't be a proper high integrity project without at least one super stupid, let's use a, a euphemism, teachable moment. The first time it was the bad soldering with the terribly cheap switch that melted and didn't work. Second time it was the over enthusiastic use of a Dremel to enlarge the ring in the pick guard. So what inexperienced stupid did I do this time that as a YouTuber I should probably cut out of the video. So remember how I said the S series was assembled in the US but used import parts? Yeah so it turns out that extends to the stock bridge. The anchors use metric measurements which if you're wondering, it's not compatible with the studs made for US bridges like the Hipshot Baby Grand. And it turns out if you try to force the issue because you're impatient, you're gonna have a bad time. Seriously, don't do that. That's a big reason why this video took so long. The anchors were damaged and caked in with finish, had to be ripped out. We had to get new studs from Hipshot as well because they were damaged. It was an absolute mess. So the takeaway here is don't do stupid shit because you're gonna get stupid results. But it's all good now, the new anchors are installed, let's get the baby grand in here. All right, so everything is done. All the new parts are in, the guitar is set up. The only thing left to do is to test it out. So first I'm gonna be running it through a full mix, switching back and forth between stock and modded. Then I'm gonna compare isolated dry tracks with the same settings. And finally, I'll be giving my thoughts and then I'll tell you how to win this high integrity Firebird. All right, so let's get to it. <laughs>
started with a bone stock Firebird Zero, one of the most disappointing guitars I've ever had on the channel. We added Grover Roto Grip Locking Tuners for $65, a Hipshot Baby Grand Bridge for another 70 ish, then a set of Gibson USA 496 humbuckers for 60 bucks each. And then finally rounded off the aesthetics with a set of reflector knobs for $15. So all in all about 270 in upgrades on a $500 base and what was the result? Well visually in my mind the bar was set really low but this is a much more premium looking guitar. You've got the larger machine heads with the thumb screws on the back and the kidney buttons. The Baby Grand is such an interesting bridge and takes up a lot more of the empty body space. The pickups now have chrome covers, which I actually think has made a huge difference here. The guitar didn't look particularly high end to begin with, and the uncovered pickups didn't really help the Firebird's cause. These look much better. And then rounding it off with the silver reflectors, they just match seamlessly with the new black and silver visual theme. A couple of minor aesthetic changes, yeah, it's not a Les Paul custom, but this proves the Zero could have at least been something that didn't look like an entry-level budget guitar. Tone-wise, I mean, it's always gonna be subjective. Even with a ton of distortion, though, the difference is very noticeable between the two sets of humbuckers. Obviously, more so with the isolated tracks. In the room, the DSCs are pretty weird. They're like kind of boomy and super harsh and trebly at the same time. The 496s are fuller, they're more balanced, more defined, more ballsy more inspiring, but not gonna lie, I'm kind of surprised how similar they sounded in the mix. Luke tells me that's because of the high and low pass filters to make the guitar fit with everything better. And so you're left with the mids, which I'll admit sounded surprisingly similar. That being said, the 496s still seem to be a little more defined in that application too. But the biggest difference is in the aspects that's frustratingly the hardest to convey over a YouTube video, and that's the feel. Stock, this was not fun to play at all. It felt super cheap, super uninspiring, and I'm telling you now, the Baby Grand is a game changer. One, feels super high quality. I've never tried a hip shop product that hasn't felt impressively premium. The aluminum construction with stainless steel saddles is awesome. Two, it's actually not a wraparound, and that is huge. For palm mutes and stuff, it feels more like a tunomatic, but it's more than just that. Now the action is lower, and because of the angled back, string tension, especially on those bass strings, is spot on. Yeah, the quality is good, design is genius, I love it, I'm 100% sold, and it's made a huge difference on this guitar. The Firebird Zero is actually fun to play, which is crazy. So I don't think it's too unrealistic that this is the guitar the Firebird Zero could have been. Remember, while I spent 270 bucks, I'm buying aftermarket parts at retail one unit at a time. With Gibson's buying power and OEM discounts, yeah, MSRP would have been a little higher, but this is a completely different guitar. Especially since the neck feels real good to begin with and it has this unique color, this would be like a solid indie or punk guitar. You know, like something out of the norm. Like if Gibson re-released the S-Series with like these kind of specs, it could be pretty tempting. So yeah, those are my thoughts. Let me know what you think in the comments. Would you have given the Firebird Zero a second thought as an affordable Gibson if it had launched like this? And if not, what else would you change to make the Firebird Zero the guitar that could have been? But of course, now you wanna know how you can win this now beast of a Firebird Zero. It's the only one in the world modded to these specs, and in my opinion, that's kinda cool. So it's super simple. All you need to do is firstly be subscribed to this channel, then visit the link in the description to the Reverb giveaway page. Once you create an account so we can count your entry, that's it. All the rest of the finer details are on the page, and good luck. And that's it for this video. Do me a favor, and if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. Thanks to Reverb for making all of this, the projects, the giveaway possible. Definitely let me know what mod projects you'd like to see next. If you'd like to grab some high integrity merch or any other merch item, we've got some new designs up. You can use the code ho 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 20 for 20% off your order. Links to social media, Patreon, Discord, all that stuff are in the description. As always, thanks so much for watching. You've been awesome and I'll see you for the next video.